I am going to be talking to you about Portugal and how its cultural values influence the businesses that work there and the possible economic growth of the country in the near future. The population of Portugal was 10,379,000 as of 2016. The surface area of the country is 92,000 kilometers squared and the language that they speak in Portugal is Portuguese. In Portugal they have a unitary democratic republic government with a prime minister and a president working alongside each other. Their currency at the moment is euros as they are part of the EU and the religion most common in Portugal is Roman Catholic which is followed by 81% of the population. The elements of culture in Portugal. In Portugal, family is a foundation of social structure and a form of stability in our lives. In other words, family is key. Portuguese people are quite traditional and conservative to themselves. In Portugal, people are fashion conscious and believe that clothes indicate social standing and success. Portugal is a culture that respects hierarchy, so society and businesses are highly stratified and vertically structured. I'm going to be talking to you about Hofstede's model as I've got it behind me. Hofstede's cultural dimensions theory is a theory of communication in between different countries. It describes the effects of society's culture on the values of its members and how these values relate to behaviour in between different cultures. Looking at this theory, the implications that businesses from abroad would have to deal with would be adapted to the ways of the Portuguese people and how they are heavily influenced in tradition and their use of hierarchies. The economic future of Portugal. Portugal's economic future promises to be successful and great for the country and businesses that work there. The country has currently eliminated its national debt and is now back in the EU's budget plans. Portugal wants to reduce its unemployment rate in the near future. Portugal is also trying to use mainly national products and influence their younger generations to stick to their national products so that they can decrease the imports from other countries and increase the country's GDP. Business practices in Portugal. In Portugal, it is very important that people use academic titles when communicating with each other. For example, when speaking to a person who has attained an equivalent of five years of study in a subject, you call them doctor or sir. The form of greeting in Portugal is usually with the use of a handshake while greeting someone and looking into their eyes. In Portugal, people believe that it is essential to build friendships with their business relations and peers. The country I will be talking about is India. India is a country which is in South Asia. It is the seventh largest country by area. With over 1.2 billion people, it is the second most populous country and the most populous democracy in the world. One problem that multinational businesses may face when doing business with India is that to them business is more about building relationships with others rather than presenting figures and sums. The strong culture can be difficult to adapt to for outsiders who may not be used to a similar culture. It is better to get to know the people involved in the business and develop a personal relationship with them. This may be difficult for other countries that want to do business with India as they may not feel comfortable with building relationships and would rather just get straight to the point and talk about figures such as profit. Another problem multinational businesses may face is that there is a high percentage of people in India that cannot afford to go to school which will affect businesses as they may not find enough people to be qualified enough to work in the business. India is growing every day and is the world's seventh largest economy and is known to be the fastest growing economy. Its GDP growth recently went down to 5.7%. However, India is still growing faster than any other large economy except from China. It has been calculated that by 2050, India's economy will be the world's second largest behind only China. India are always looking to grow and expand their business. They have many businesses with large economies, which are owned by strong, rich countries, such as the United States, Saudi Arabia, and Germany. The four main things that India are trying to improve in the future include poverty, sustainable urbanization, manufacturing, and technology. There will be many cultural differences between India and Western countries when dealing with business meetings and other practices. For example, in India, shaking hands when meeting is not very common. Their way of meeting would be to place their hands in front of the other person's chest and bow forward. Indian society is very vertically structured, which means roles and statuses are extremely important and there should be respect towards higher ranking people. It is known as disrespectful to call someone by their first name. Making business decisions takes a lot of time and personal effort. 
in India as it can be slowed down because your direct contact is not authorised to make decisions and has to consult with the boss. The country I will be discussing will be Ghana. Ghana is located in the west side of Africa next to the Ivory Coast and the Atlantic Ocean. The capital of Ghana is Accra and it has currently got a population of 30 million people. There are many languages spoken in Ghana, but its official language is English and the most popular is Queen. It's currently listed one of the countries with the most growing economy and this is due to the natural resources the country provides, such as cocoa, gold and oil. Its current economy is estimated around $37.35 billion and ranks at 89 of the growing economy countries list. Ghana has a strong culture throughout the country and it is shown through their businesses also. There are many risks when it comes to doing business with other countries. The risk of doing business with Ghana is that the country has quite a high level of poverty. Although it is improving, it still can play a major factor when it comes to doing business with other countries. This means that many people in Ghana cannot afford to go to school or university because they don't have the knowledge, skills or qualifications needed in order to confidently do business with other countries. Another risk when it comes down to Ghana doing business with other countries is that there is a poor power supply throughout the country, seeing as this could affect the important, important business meetings and phone calls which can lead to big major deals. So if there's no power supply, it could cut off the phone calls and put off companies from wanting to do business with them. Another factor relating to the poor power supply is that it could also affect businesses wanting to build or need the power to run their business. Another risk when it comes to the business in Ghana is ensuring that you respect their culture and ensure that you respect their beliefs and business beliefs. This means always greet them with your right hand and never with your left and not having too much of a business manner when it, as it's considered through. Ghana had an economic growth from oil production of 14% in 2011 which fell down to 3.5% in 2016 which was the lowest drop over the past two decades. The economy eventually got better in 2017 where it grew to around 6.3%. The future predictions of the growth in the economy is set to grow to 8.5% this year. As oil prices are rising, this means more growth for Ghana's economy as they, will, as they produce the oil from their land. One of the largest investors in Ghana is the UK where they trade goods and services which total to about £1.05 billion. Ghana also wants to expand and do business with other countries in order to help their economy grow. In Ghana, it is important to greet people from right to left and the right hand must always be used as the left hand is considered to them as the toilet hand and can be seen as disrespectful if used. This order is always followed no matter the age, gender or status of the person. It's also essential for all visitors to visit the local chief of the town you are in in order to pay your respects. In Ghana, having a too business-like approach is considered rude and they appreciate having a nice conversation and offering pleasantries before discussing business. Colleagues should also be referred to by their first name once told to do so, otherwise always be referred to by their preferred title as it is seen as disrespectful and rude. Usually in the first meeting on business, there's no actual business discussed, but get to know one another on a personal level.